MasterChef is down to the final four. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. For me now, it's all about winning. This is what I've been waiting for. This is one tough competition. It will be a good, a good fight. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Christopher, Chris, Andy and Matt have proved they're the best amateur cooks in the country. Semi-final time, we start all over again with four great cooks. Getting through those rounds was really tough and it is nothing compared to what is going to hit them now they've reached the semi-final. It all starts from here. Today's test is all about volume catering and teamwork. First, they have to cook 10 portions of a single breakfast. Bacon's a great thing. The idea of them smothering maple syrup, there's no need for it. It's burnt, my friend. <laughs> then they're off to cook at Britain's largest steelworks for over 600 hungry workers. Yeah. Ten minutes late, we've got customers standing outside and there's some big buggers there. Why? Right. Wow, that is... Whoa! That may be a little too spicy. I'm, I'm doing this for me because I want to change my life. It's as simple as that. You know, I, I wake up in the morning and pinch myself. You know, it, it's kind of like I'm in the last four of MasterChef. I can't believe it. It's a lot more serious now. You've, you've got down to the last four, and you know that if you do win it, then it will change your life. I can almost smell victory, but I know we're embarking on the most challenging part of this whole competition. There's everything to play for, because at the end of the semi-finals, one of them will be sent home. This is the semi-finals. For the first time in this competition, you are going to be working as a team, and you are now standing next to your teammate. Today, you're going to cook for us breakfast. Ten dishes, all exactly the same, and you have just 40 minutes to do it in. Gentlemen, let's cook. Each team must create 10 identical breakfast dishes from today's ingredients, which include haddock, bacon, eggs, bread, courgettes, rice, onions, and maple syrup. We don't overdo it. No, we want to keep no. it simple and tasty. OK. I'm just wondering whether we could do sort of Kedri style dish with haddock. It would be quite good because we do it in one pot. Some nice cooked, really crispy bacon. I like the crispy bacon idea. Scrambled eggs, super. crispy bacon, maple. Let's taste it yeah. at the time. Today's test is about volume, it's about consistency, and it has to be done on time. Until now, they've always cooked alone. They've always been fighting against each other. Now they're going to have to learn how to work together. Who is going to take charge? Whose personality is going to come through? Who is going to have the organisation? Matt, do you want any butter in these mushrooms? Yeah. Family man Matt loves diving and foraging for ingredients and dreams of a restaurant serving his rustic-style food. This is good food. Look, I really, really like that dish. But he struggles with his presentation. You have to make it a bit more dainty and a bit more refined. What I've got to do from here is learn how to design a plate of food. So I'm determined to give it my absolute best. Matt has given me some of the most memorable dishes I've ever eaten. I think that guy's phenomenal. But it is about presentation. It is about finesse for Matt. And what will he be like as a team worker? Can he hold it together today? So as soon as you want those courgettes out, give me a shout if you need the other one. OK. Matt's teammate is 42-year-old father of two, Chris, who wants to swap his life at a call centre for one in food. I would never say that this is my last chance to change my life, but it could well be the best chance I've got. Throughout the competition, Chris is impressed with exotic flavour combinations. I love the richness and the deepness of that shrimp. I like the crunch that comes with the peanuts. All I want to do is eat the rest of it. 
He really wants to make it as a professional cook. The thing is with Chris right now is he gives himself so much to do. Can he resist the temptation to overcomplicate his food and finish today's task in time? Is that a burning stuff? No, no, that's um, caramelization. <laughs> Gentlemen, do you have any idea what you're actually doing for us? We're going for the classic scrambled egg with mushrooms um, and bacon on some toast, basically. If we're doing a classic British breakfast, why are we including courgettes? Although it's a classic English breakfast, eggs go really well with courgettes. Is there a natural leader here? Half, half, half and half, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and that's so working quite well as a to work partnership. With. They're quite scared about who was actually going to take charge. They don't want to take control, but somebody's got to guide the pack. Scrambled eggs, bacon, toast. Yeah, fine. Maybe or maybe not courgettes. Guys, you are halfway. If you could maybe get a fish going, I reckon we should poach it all just in case. If you can get two pans going, all the better. Comeback contestant Andy has made the most of his second shot at the MasterChef title. That is, uh, that is cooking of the first order. Oh. Andy, that is tip top. But he sometimes lacks focus and his standards can slip. That's a pale reflection of some of the cooking you've done, I think. You've got to continue to prove to us that you're putting all in. I think I need to improve my consistency and I need to just try and reach that fifth gear with, with all the dishes I produce. I'm going to have to really, really, really push myself. Very few comeback contestants actually make it through to the final four. This guy has a talent. The thing is for him today is he's got ten plates to put up with his team member. He's going to make sure every single one is exactly the same. I think you should keep the eggs separately and then fold the fish through the hot rice. Okay, so what, like, quarter them up or something? Yeah. Yeah. Andy's partner is 24-year-old civil servant Christopher. His natural ability to produce good-looking modern British food has impressed. It's simply delicious. But his inexperience can result in basic mistakes. I think it's an elegant-looking dish. I think it's pretty well cooked. But I think your sauce is a bit salty and your mushrooms need a bit more depth of flavour. I think you've got to take care of those seasonings. I think I'm going to have to learn loads. There's things that you hear about and techniques and ingredients and you're kind of like, oh, I don't know what that is. Starting from the bottom is what, what I want to do. I want to learn like from the bottom as like an apprentice, so I think I'm a, a good kind of age to do that. We know that Christopher's a great cook and he will learn very, very fast. The guy has a natural understanding of what is great food. He's also quite a novice cook compared to the others. Now, in a team, is he going to hide under somebody else's shadow? Is he going to let somebody else take charge? <laughs> Gentlemen, first time ever working as a team. Yeah. Have you guys decided who's in charge? Yeah, we're just, just working together, basically. Always amazes me that the one who's in charge is always the first one to say we're working together, Andy. <laughs> 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 I've got to take the, take the responsibility, then. If it screws up, it'll be my fault as well. What are you going to cook for us today? Yeah, we're going to cook kedgeri today. And how many times, Christopher, have you cooked Kedri in your life? Um, none, I don't think, actually. Gentlemen, good luck. Thanks. Cheers. Very much, Andy's in control. That's absolutely for sure. Kedri, very good. And a nice breakfast item. What do you think? Lovely. You've only got four minutes. If your food's not going on your plate, you are in jeopardy of not finishing your task. Ah. Guys, you've got to dish that up. Okay. No, seriously, dish it up. You've got under it. three minutes left. You got 30 seconds. Time's up. Whoa. Time's up. Finished. Andy and Christopher have only just plated their spiced rice haddock and egg kedgeri in time. They're not identical. Some of the portions are much bigger than others, and some of the portions are just too small. Yeah, that was uh, 
Well, I was the one who dished them up, so I'll, I'll take the blame for that. Yeah, hopefully they'll be they'll taste all right. I think the kedgeree and the fish and the egg is absolutely right. The onions on top are making it very, very sweet. Um, just watch the added garnish if you don't really need it. Everything's cooked well. It just hasn't got enough of the spice. So it's just a bit concerned, you know, breakfast people don't want to be... have a head full of spice. So and they shouldn't order kedgeree. All right, <coughs> back up. How do you think you went today? Yeah, I think we worked well as a team. Um, there was definitely a timing issue. Um, at the end, it kind of just ran away with us. And, um, you know, plating up ten plates is, does take a lot longer than we um, anticipated, really. Despite not appointing a leader, have Matt and Chris made ten faultless plates of scrambled egg, mushrooms, bacon and maple syrup. You, Chris, started off doing courgettes. They don't appear. Why? Well, I, I started making the courgettes, but hadn't discussed the courgettes with Matt, so they were there just in case. If you're not going to use it, don't cook it. The cream mushrooms and the scrambled eggs and the toast are really lovely, but what does for your mouth, unfortunately, is the sweetness of that bacon. And bacon's a great thing. The idea of them smothering maple syrup, there's no need for it. It's burnt, my friend. <laughs> Absolutely lovely scrambled eggs. Bacon could do a bit less cooking, so it wasn't as chewy. And I know our North American cousins love some sweetness over their bacon. Me? Nah. Are you guys happy with what you've done today? Certainly the lessons for me are, firstly, know what you're going to do and stick to it, rather than mess around. It wasn't the most efficient team I've ever seen, but it was the happiest. <laughs> Every single task we do in the studio from now on points to what comes next, and I can tell you what comes next is ferocious. Semi-final of MasterChef and today the first task, a breakfast test and the idea of quantity and quality and consistency. And they all did fairly well. The idea of Christopher and Andy working together was a good one. Andy took charge right from the start, and I think Christopher had the good sense to let him. I kind of came up with the idea of Kedri, so maybe I led a bit on to how we're going to put it together, but I don't know, we worked pretty well together as a team. Kedri's rice was soft, the fish was perfectly cooked, nice eggs, not enough spice. It should have been equal portion of egg and haddock and rice on each plate. They really struggled to get it out at the end. They can't do that tomorrow. Yeah, there was a little bit of a timing issue at the end with me and Andy, and I kind of, I dished the food up and it, it wasn't as consistent as I was like, and I was kind of like, oh, you know. But by and large, I think their dish was a good idea, I think they cooked it quite well, and I think they worked brilliantly as a team. Matt and Chris, they had no real clear idea where they were going with that dish. They were very, very good at being polite to each other. They would happily go on holiday with each other. One of them has got to take charge. I really enjoyed that. That was... Uh... You know, that was good fun and great working with someone else. You could see there was nobody really in control and that showed on the place at the end. The courgettes didn't appear, the bacon was a bit overdone. Like the scrambled eggs, lovely scrambled eggs, like the toast, like the mushrooms, why on earth did they put maple syrup all over their bacon? This is not Kansas. I was very happy with my bacon. We said at the beginning, we'll cook the bacon, we'll test it in some maple syrup and then we both agreed to go for it. They got through it, that's absolutely fine. But I think if they're going to do well tomorrow, they have to decide who is going to be in charge. These guys are really going to have to concentrate. We're really up their game, and they're going to have to work very, very hard. It's early on day two and the contestants are travelling across the country to their next challenge. Mainly I'm just really excited about what's to come. This is going to be a mad cooking adventure and I can't wait to get stuck in. Definitely nervous, but if I didn't get nervous, I'd probably be a little bit worried because I kind of think, well, the passion's probably gone and I, I shouldn't really be doing this. My strategy has been survival throughout until this point. It's all about winning now. I wouldn't think I'm the favourite, but I'm determined to get myself there. 
it will be a good fight. Bring it on. Port Talbot Steelworks is a cornerstone of Welsh industry. Around the clock, 365 days a year, hundreds of workers man Britain's largest steel plant. It's absolutely massive. In just a few hours, over 600 of them will be expecting lunch. The four semi-finalists will be cooking it. Good morning, gentlemen. We told you yesterday about big numbers. We weren't joking. Today, there's going to be around about 600 people converging on you for lunch. Good luck. Off you go. Cooking in the same teams as yesterday, they'll have just three hours to design and cook two mains and a pudding, using only the ingredients available in the larder. Overseeing the contestants is head chef Mike Dickinson. Four main entrees today. If there's no curry today, I get strung up over the balcony, yeah? Both teams have to cook 150 portions of each dish, and they'll compete to see which menu sells the most. They tend to eat here with their eyes, they really do. They'll come in and they won't even look at the menu, some of them. They'll look at what's on the counter. So it's a challenge for the guys to make it look good because it'll sell. What we've decided on is do, do a beef stew because we think that's always going to be a winner with some root veg mash. Um, and then we're doing the fish and chips option, which uh, should be popular if we get it right. I need a hot dessert from you guys as well. You've got black blackberries or something? Blackcurrants. Yeah. Apple and blackcurrant crumble. Yeah. Apple and blackcurrant crumble. Yeah. What are you going to give all these big, hefty guys who are starving? Chicken madras. Chicken madras. Sounds good. A chicken stir fry and a lemon sponge. Lemon sponge. Yeah. In yesterday's breakfast challenge, Matt and Chris struggled with a lack of leadership. They're determined not to make the same mistake again. Matt wanted to take the lead on this one, so, you know, we're not going to fall out over it. I'm basically taking the role of worker. At the end of this, I want to be running my own kitchen. So, yeah, I want to take the lead, of course. This is by far the biggest cooking challenge that's ever come my way. And it's frightening, but you haven't got time to be scared. I think it's about getting the, the labour done as quickly as possible and then making sure we deliver. Sorry. Matt, are you confident we're where we need to be then? Yeah. Across the kitchen, Andy has once again assumed the leadership role with Christopher. We get onions, celery and carrots in there. In there. No. And also some carrots with the potatoes and whatever other root veg we can get. Yesterday, they had problems plating up 10 portions of food, so cooking for 600 people is a daunting task. It's just on a scale that you can't really envisage, you know, 150 portions of food. Yeah, just kind of don't know what to expect, really. Greg, it's quiet now, but in two hours' time, this place is going to be heaving. What worries me is how they are going to keep up with service. I don't think these guys are ready for it. I really don't. With less than two hours until service, Matt's taken charge of the sponge pudding and chicken madras. It's got a bite. All right, I'm glad I didn't put the extra madras in there. Yeah, it's got a bite. <laughs> Not over the top? No. You've got to have a bite to it here. There's no bite that will come back. This is all new to me. I've never come to curry before. Meanwhile, Chris is struggling with the sheer volume of food required for his stir-fry. But I haven't stopped and, you know, I'll be pleased when it's all cooked. There's an hour before service and Christopher starts on the ever-popular fish and chips. It's a huge task requiring him to batch fry 150 individual portions. How many can you fry at a time? Um, 12. What's concerning me is that you end up frying fish to order with a big queue of hungry still workers. With Christopher manning the fryer full time, Andy has to take care of everything else, making both the apple crumble and the beef stew. Yeah, it's going all right on the home straight. Andy's confident, but Chef's not so sure. He doesn't realise how much pressure he's got to get all that stuff on the counter. The guy's got to do the running around. He needs the roller skates. There are just 30 minutes before lunch starts. The steel workers have a limited meal break, so service must begin on time. Stew's a 
bit thin, mate. You can't have thin stew, otherwise I think it's soup. While Andy rushes to thicken his stew, Matt's chicken madras curry is almost ready to go. I think if you're going to do a curry, it's got to have spice. Why? Right. Wow, that is... Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> that may be a little too spicy. Comments from John and Greg is it's damn hot. Damn hot, sir. Jesus, that is hot now. That is really, really hot. I think you need yeah. to portion some up. I'll give you some yoghurt, and you can uh, add a bit of yoghurt and mix it in each one. Now we're really getting pushed. OK? OK. Ten minutes. Matt has just moments to tame his curry, while the others race the clock to get their food out on time. We're almost there. It's the biggest pot I've ever stirred, though. OK, you've got three minutes, yeah? All right. They're getting it done, they're getting the plates out there. Who's is going to sell? Who's got the most popular dishes? I just hope they haven't sacrificed quality for speed. It's 12 o'clock and the workers queue for lunch. Matt and Chris's chicken madras curry, vegetarian stir-fry and lemon sponge are ready. But across the pass, chef spots a problem. No, that's not going to sit on the plate, mate. And by the time the girls go on everything, and it's going to go everywhere. It really is a bit sloppy. OK. As Andy rushes to thicken his beef stew for the second time, the hungry steel workers are left to wait. Yeah, they wouldn't pay that for stew, would they? No. Not wheels. Ten minutes late, we've got customers standing outside and there's some big buggers there. Finally, Andy and Christopher's beef stew, fish and chips and apple crumble are ready. Ten minutes late, the doors open. Chicken madras, please. I love chicken madras, please. Hey, what can I get you? Uh, fish, chips and beans, please. Coming up. Chicken madras and chips. The curry and fish and chips are immediate favourites, but out back, Christopher is struggling to keep up with demand. Uh, a bit concerned on the fish still. He has one back up, he's got one on the go. There's a crowd building up. They need to start talking to each other. If you've got a big cube of fish and chips and you haven't got any, what happens? What happens? Well, I'm going to run that way. I don't know which way you want to run. <laughs> Orders for fish continue to flood in. Uh, fish, chips and big beans, please. Fish, please. Fish, chips and beans, please. Yeah, coming up, mate. But Andy's not communicating with Christopher. Does Chef has no choice okay. but to swap uh, them over. He's got no fish left and he's got no batter left. OK, so he needs to start cooking it. OK. Thanks. At the moment, I'm just trying to get fish out in time because it's selling so quick. I'm just a sweaty fish fryer at the moment. John, that queue just won't stop. That is going out the door and out of the next door and into the street. I've never seen anything quite like this. They're still coming in. Will they keep up? It's a long, long way to go. A new batch of fish is still some time away. Christopher desperately tries to sell the stew. Come on, guys. Stew. Beef stew. They're not interested. How long for that fish? There's fish here. Did you just deliver this, did you? Thank you very much. Yeah. At last, the fish makes it out. Fish, chips and beans, please. On the other team, Chris is confidently selling the stir-fry and curry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can I have a vegetable stir-fry? Yeah. Vegetable stir-fry. That's right. The stir-fry. It's lovely, honestly. 
Good man. And in the kitchen, Matt is thriving under the pressure. Just got getting a bit frantic. We've used up all our veggie. I've got some more of my chicken noodles over there. Chris is out of um, curry. It's all going on. As the end of service draws closer, both teams hit their stride. It's lovely. I made that myself. There you go. Brilliant, thank you. Cheers, thanks very much. Fish was delicious. Lovely chips. Nice. Good chicken and trash. It's better than what we normally have here. It's really nice, tasty. I've had the stir fry. I've had it in the past, and it does taste better today, to be honest. After five long hours, lunch for 600 is finally brought to a close. Well done, Matt. It's been a pleasure, mate. Good on you. You pleased? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's All going right. well. Yeah. All right, All right. Mate. Good work. Good job. It's hard to yeah. say, but hard day's work. Yeah, it's all right, eh? Mike, big busy lunch today. Generally, our four amateurs, how'd they get on? Industry's totally different. It's mass production. You've got to be fast. You've got to be quick. Um, overall, they did a good job. Tell me, how did Christopher and Andy get on? Because at one point, you had to step in, didn't you? They lost it when the service started. They weren't talking to each other. And that's why I did the change. If we'd let them go on with that, it would have been a disaster because there would have been nothing. Meltdown. Meltdown, definitely. What do you think of the teamwork of Matt and Chris? What they produced and what they sent out, the volume of it, they worked well. But was the feedback on the curry as good as you had of hoped? Because it was a bit spicy, I thought maybe we'd get some adverse comments, but actually, no. Um, as I say, the guys here like a curry. Do you know how many dishes you actually sold today? The curry was the best seller. The fish close second, stir fry close third, and the stew struggled a bit. So it was the team of Matt and Chris that edged it. Yeah, definitely. On a day like today, to sell everything like that, it's good for business. It was really good, really enjoyed it. I think I had a good day. Matt and I worked well together, and you know, hopefully we got a decent result at the end of it all. But tomorrow's another day, and I'll be giving it my all. And I've definitely got some big lessons to take away from that. Everything about it was really tough. We're glad it's over. It's just the volume, it's trying to deal with that massive amount of volume. But it's definitely a learning experience. These guys today performed absolute heroics. They have learned the benefits of organisation and teamwork. These guys have proved they can now do big numbers. The challenges don't stop now. We're going to keep on applying the pressure all the way through. And let's just remember one thing. At the end of this week, one of them is going to go home. Next time, things get even tougher when our semi-finalists cook for the discerning palates of some of the country's top business leaders. There is no room for mistakes. They have to get it absolutely right. It's a bit of a nightmare, really. Come on. I'm completely out of my comfort zone. Really up now, I've got to start moving. You're going against the clock. This is critical now for the whole service. Screw up today, and I think I'm as good as out of the competition. It's that simple. 